Okay, so in this uh, theory video, I'm going to talk about how to animate a jump. And a jump is not dissimilar to the Luxo lamp hop exercise that you did at the very beginning of the course. Uh, in effect, a human jump is quite similar to the Luxo lamp hop, only you've got to deal with, instead of just one base of the lamp, you've got to deal with two legs and also arms. So it's more complicated, but the principles are the same. Uh, and the thumbnail, you should go back and have a look at the thumbnails for the uh, lamp because it is uh, relevant to what we're doing today. So as usual with, with any piece of animation, you want to think about what you're going to animate in advance. Um, think about it, uh, go and look it up, look up reference of people jumping, um, get inspired uh, and of course act it out yourself so that you get the basic poses. You always want to be thinking, what's my start position? What's my anticipation position? Um, uh, maybe there's a lift off, then a landing, a contact position, probably a squash, a recoil, and a settle at the end. And you can, as you as you act it out, you should be able to get a feeling for those poses. And then finally, of course, you want to draw your own thumbnails and you draw your own key poses. Or although although I will help you out with that by supplying thumbnails for you. So here's the Luxo lamp hop that we were talking about. So you've got a start position, then an anticipation as the lamp goes into a squash, then it lifts off here, uh, then you've got the passing position, uh, the contact, the squash position, and then a kind of overshoot and settle at the end. So um, uh, uh, obviously the human hop is more complicated uh, than this, but that's the basic pattern. Start, squash, lift off, mid-air position, contact, squash, overshoot, and settle. Um, so here, um, as with all things, we any kind of human or animal locomotion, you always want to go and check out Edward Mybridge. Um, and you'll be well familiar with him now, the uh, English photographer who worked in California in the 1850s and pioneered stop motion photography. And his books are now uh, very helpfully in the public domain. And there is a wealth of information and uh, incredibly useful guides to uh, all kinds of human and animal locomotion. And here are the main poses. You've got our start position, then the anticipation as the man gets into this sort of wind up pose, then the lift off, then the up position as he's in the midair, then our contact position here, a squash, and then a settle at the end. So that's the basic uh, motion. And go ahead and act it out yourself, not necessarily like this lady doing the high jump, <laughs> don't do any, sustain any injuries, but, um, but you know, do, do, get a feeling for it and also videotape yourself doing it. There's no harm in setting up a camera to get the main poses. So let's break it out, break it down. Uh, these are the main poses. These are taken from the uh, animator's survival kit, which um, you should all have purchased by now. Uh, you've got your uh, anticipation position here, uh, a, a kind of wind up, then a lift off, a mid air position, contact, and then uh, recoil. So, um, uh, there's also, here's another example from of Cliff Nordberg, the, the great uh, Disney animator who was in charge of Disney training uh, during the 1950s and 60s. Um, and he used to do these thumbnails for the animators. And you can see here, he's got, here's our start position. There's an anticipation here. Uh, uh, then, a, then, a, then a kind of stretch position, very exaggerated and cartoony in this case. Then a, a mid-air position. <clears throat> then a contact, uh, squash, overshoot, and settle. Very similar to the lamp, really. Um, here's um, a similar uh, thing by Nordberg with a kind of cartoony gag ending. Uh, and here's back to Mybridge. So there's our start pose. There's our anticipation as the man gets into the wind up. There's our lift as he as he thrusts, thrusts upwards. And you're going to need to feel this stretched out body position here to get the thrust. Then a mid-air or passing position. Uh, and then he's going to come down for the contact which you probably want a straight leg there. In reality, it might not be straight, but for our purposes, a straight leg will help because then you can get more contact, more contrast with the squash position here where the legs bend uh, and then uh, an overshoot and finally settle at the end. And here it is again. I've slightly cheated on this. There isn't an overshoot and settle in the Mybridge thumbnails, but I've reversed the two so that we can go down into the squash into an overshoot and then settle at the end. Gives us a little bit more um, flexibility. Now you obviously want to get to know your rig, check out the rig that you're using. Um, 
I suggest using perhaps um, uh, uh, Heavy, which is a nice free rig available at Creative Crash, or perhaps uh, Morpheus. Um, it's up to you. Uh, there are many, many nice biped rigs out there, uh, free to use, but make sure that we always credit their owner when we, um, when we use them. Um, uh, check, you want to check your thumbnails and your timing, of course, and I highly recommend that you um, copy out the thumbnails that are supplied with, with this course. And here, here are the thumbnails that I'm going to suggest you use. And they're based on the ones from the Animator Survival Kit, but combined with the MyBridge ones. So we've got a start position here at frame one. Then at frame nine, there's an anticipation. Eleven, we're coming up here, but that's really a breakdown position. You're going to start with one and nine, and then do 13. That's our stretch. 17 is our passing. 21 is our contact with a nice straight leg. 25 is our squash position. 29 is a recoil, uh, recoil, and then slow into 37. That's that, these are the thumbnails that I will use to do the tutorial. And I suggest that you print these out, uh, make copies yourself. Um, and all, it's always good to get into the habit of copying thumbnails because it really helps you understand about the thumbnailing process and how thumbnails work and how you can use thumbnails to plan out your animation. Very, very important for learning animation because of course when you're doing when you're sitting there in a studio and the director says oh, I want you to animate this guy jumping here you're not going to have any thumbnails you're going to have to think it through yourself um, here's actually a slightly different version of the same thing uh, the only difference is he uh, here is I've got the arms delayed uh, as the character is coming down so actually this version this second version is probably slightly better um, because you've got the arms going up and then sort of and then delaying as they come down and then finally of course you're going to show your work to the director um, and uh, here's, here's a top director who you might one day have the pleasure of working with um, but uh, uh, and the director of course is going to give you feedback and part of the trick with animation is learning how to take feedback and how to make adjustments to your work especially if you're working on visual effects stuff where the feedback um, can be uh, uh, demanding uh, and persistent now you always need to get into the habit of of being able to make tweaks to your work and adjusting it. Um, so, so that's a basic introduction to the mechanics of a jump. Um, make sure you download the thumbnails. Uh, make sure you act it out yourself. Watch some YouTube video reference uh, and and make a plan before you and and then do your then do your poses um, and your uh, and then finally your breakdowns uh, uh, and then final spline. So, uh, uh, good luck and happy animating.